April 5th, 5.58pm, High Prosecutor's Offices, Room 1202. Hello everyone, Triple S, back here with more Instant Investigations, Miles Ditch with Prosecutor's Path. This is the third part of The Forgotten Turnabout. Last time, we found out the dead body was not Kay, but someone called Jill, and Jill had a letter from Kay, and Kay had a letter from Jill, so they are connected in some way. And Jill also had the missing memories, promises book thing that young Kay Faraday had and then lost and it was stolen. Um, Francisca showed up. That was nice. She was whipping Sebastian a lot, which was great to see. And then uh, Sebastian's dad showed up, plays the best. He cries a lot. And then when Justine was going to arrest Kay Faraday for the murder of Jill, is it Jill Crane? Something like that. The... Uh, Miles just was like, took off his badge, threw it on the desk, was like, I'm no longer a prosecutor. And everyone was shocked and aghast. And then Kay Faraday ran off, and Edgeworth went after her. So, let's see what happens now. Kay! Oh, she's not here either. Where in the world could she have gone? Oh, hello. Wow. Raised back really quickly. Knock, knock, I'm here. Mr. Shields. What's going on, Miles? Why the long face? Take it from Uncle Ray. Won't be popular with the ladies looking like that. Why are you here? Did something happen? That's my line. Have you seen the news about the murder at the PIC headquarters? You're hearing, wasn't it there today? I found myself wondering if you guys had somehow got caught up in it. Wait, it's already made the news? Here they're searching for a teenage girl suspected of killing an attorney. I can't imagine it could have been her, but it's been bothering me. Could you give me the full rundown? But the truth is... Miles, are you trying to give your uncle a ray a heart attack? I'm not joking, she really did lose her memory. On top of that, she's a suspect. That makes things even more difficult. Where would she have run off to? She's lost her memory, right? I was hoping she would return here, but... Not likely. She felt responsible for what happened to you, right? And there's no way she would come back here. I know that, but where else can I look? The hospital? Calm down, Miles. This isn't like you. It's rare to see you get so heated up. Well, not that it's a bad thing. If you're trying this hard to save an innocent suspect from false charges, I'm sure you'd make a great defense attorney. Actually, just a while ago, I turned in my badge. That doesn't mean I decided to become a defense attorney. Besides, he isn't just a mere suspect. We've only known her for a short time, but we've been through quite a lot together. And I know she isn't capable of murder. I'm surprised. I never thought you would go so far to support someone else. I don't know if you even realize it yourself, but... It seems a deep bond has already begun to grow between you and Kay. I'd say it even gives my bond with your father a run for his money. No, it's not that deep. She just keeps barging into my state of affairs. <laughs> yeah, that girl can be quite handful. I'm certain that something has changed inside you since you met her. I'm really jealous, you know. After all, I lost my old partner. That's why you need to find Kay right now. I'm not waiting to lose your bond like your uncle Ray did. Well then, I have a proposal. We have no idea where she is, and searching around blindly won't get us anywhere. In that case, why don't we try searching for the cause of her memory loss? Maybe that could give us a lead. I see, that might be a good idea. From what she told me, something must have happened to her at the Grand Tower. Great, that's it. Let's get going then. Hey, at the very least, could you stop looking so grim? If you stay that way, Kay probably won't want to come back at all. Good grief. I don't batch for this man. Okay, so since he doesn't have Gumshoe as a partner, we get Ray Shields as a partner. April 5th, 6.42pm, Grand Tower viewing platform. It seems it's already dark. Still open on the day of a murder. You can admire their capitalist spirit. But there's no one here. Looks like we've got the place all to ourselves. To prove Kay's innocence, I'll need to investigate here... Her, uh, to investigate her lost memories. Hey, hey! Let's go, Miles. We can investigate the roof as much as we want. So let's do what we can.
Do what we can, huh? I suppose that's all we can do for now. Begin investigation, Grand Tower viewing platform. I like how he says we have the place to ourselves and there's people up here. I mean, what? Okay, well, we'll start with where she says she was standing, at the cherry tree. Uh, if I can examine it, uh, there we go. It's a cherry tree with branches spread wide. The flowers are nearly in full bloom. According to Kay's testimony, before she was pushed, she was standing under the cherry tree. Where was Kay standing? Kay testified that she remembers standing under the cherry tree. Logic added. Okay, uh, let's go talk to these guys over here. Miles Edgeworth, so we meet again. What are you two doing here? Well, we came all this way, so I thought we'd buy some cotton candy. And what about you? You want folks to get the wrong idea about you? Do not worry, I'll decide my own actions. You're just a no good ex prosecutor. It's no wonder you got the axe. Wait, what? You got fired? You didn't be concerned with what happens to me. You sure? Um, oh yeah, what happened to Kay? Huh? Was there some sort of trouble between you two? Anything I could do to help? How about an injection? It's fine. Injections are answer to everything. Oh right, it's getting cold, isn't it? Let's go home. Well then, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Let's meet again soon. Oh, they're off. Okay, we're going to examine the railing on the left side in front of Ray. The person in the red raincoat who pushed Kay off the tower. She said they came toward her from the direction of the stand. From that we can deduce... Kay was pushed over the railing on this side. Railing, person in raincoat came over from the stand and pushed Kay over. Logic added. The railing is about as high as my chest. It's unlikely that someone could fall from here accidentally. Hmm, I don't see any particular problems with this railing. Okay. Oh. Ah, there we go. The guy said run to the right side. Ah! And talk to Kay. Was she in the tree? Ow! Kay. Um, um, don't mind me. I was just admiring the view beneath the tree. Did you just fall out of that tree? I didn't mean to fall. My foot slipped. You're a suspect, and yet you remained at the crime scene. That's not a smart thing to do. Oops. Oh. Okay, that's weird. Bit of lag went on there because I got like an email and it lagged my thing. So hopefully everything's still in sync. Nothing messed up. But I'm pretty sure I just got a spam fake email saying TV license. Something's going wrong. I don't have a TV license because I don't own a house. <laughs> I don't need to buy one. Anyway, let's carry on. You know if you have memory loss, shouldn't you have realised this much? This whole time while you were playing the silly game of hide and seek, I've been worried sick about you. Are you angry at me? Of course I am. Answer me. What were you doing here? Did you think I'd let you off the hook that easily just because you have memory loss? That's not it. I came here because I thought I could get your badge back. What? If I don't regain my memories, you'll never get it back. I thought if I went back to where I lost my memories, then maybe I'll remember. If I could just just remember killing her. Heh. <laughs> You're still the same as you were before you lost your memories. Your thoughts and actions have always exceeded my expectations. Without a doubt, you are the K Faraday I know so well. However, I cannot approve of your recklessness. I'll stand. Cut! You get zero style points, Miles. Or more like negative points. Here's how it's done. Okay, how about a hug? Uh, okay. Oh, well then. Mr. Shields. It was just a joke. Honest. Oh. We interrupt this program with breaking news about the Grand Tower murder case. 
The police believe the culprit is a teenage girl who was present at the crime scene. She remains at large as the police continue to search for her whereabouts. Oh dear, this is getting pretty serious. Well gang, what's the plan? We don't have much time. Indeed, it's only a matter of time before they find us here. So then, why don't you tag along with us for a while, okay? But, I'll just cause trouble for you again. It pays me to say this, but I've got nothing left to lose at this point. Is Edgeworth? That settles it. We're all in this together now. Miles, you're in charge of proving Kay's innocence. Failure is not an option. Yes, I understand. Okay, I want you to help Miles with his investigation as much as you can. Y yes, I'll do my best. Let's be quick about it, before the cops find us here. Unlike some people, Uncle Ray still has a lot to lose. Sheesh! If I lose the law office, I'll never be able to face Gregory. This man. I'm glad he's on our side. Okay, so... Uh, we talked to her. Yes? Can I help you with something? Um, memories. I came back here because I thought I might remember something. Could you again go over what you told me before? Oh, well... It was raining, so I stood under the cherry tree to take shelter. Oh, I'm burping. Mm, pardon me. And then a red... A person in a red raincoat appeared. That person pushed me, and I fell. Can you tell me anything about the person in the raincoat? I'm sorry. I don't remember that much. No way. As the person approached me, I saw the moon just over their shoulder. The moon? But it's over there. Yes, that's right. It's just a faint memory, but... I think the moon was in the exact same spot as it is now. It's floating just above the cherry tree. She could see the moon behind the figure in the raincoat. Moon. Kay saw the moon behind the person in raincoat. It's in the same spot tonight. Logic added. This is a new piece of testimony. We should just keep it in mind. Uh, recollections. Mr. Edgeworth, for a while now, I feel like I'm on the verge of remembering something. What? Is that true? Well then, please speak freely. Say whatever comes to your mind. Uh, okay. Remember a faint scent. It's a wonderful smell coming from the counter of a food stall. I followed the fragrance, only to find a perfectly sculpted burger resting on two golden buns. The tender and juicy patty made my taste buds sing with joy. Yes, I can remember what I thought at that moment. I want seconds. Uh, I don't think this memory has anything to do with the case. God damn it. And K Faraday. You called yourself the Great Thief Yeti Galassi. You prided yourself on being a noble thief who steals the truth. Do you remember anything about that? Well, uh... Aha! Uh -huh. Maybe I was called a noble thief because I won the Nobel Prize. That's Nobel Prize, not noble. And they don't give prizes to for thievery. Well, that was just pointless. Why don't we have those two options? Recollections of Cave Friday. It was pointless to have those two options. That was just a waste of time. Oh, uh, oh, logic time. It's a railing and moon connect. If I recall Kay's testimony, a person in a raincoat approached her from behind the candy stand. Then this person supposedly pushed Kay over the railing opposing the stand. Moreover, Kay said she saw the moon over the person's shoulder. However, earlier I confirmed that the moon is floating in the opposite direction. And on the night Kay lost her memories, it seems the moon was in the exact same spot. Therefore, the positions of the moon and the person in the raincoat don't match up. Her memories have probably become confused. After all, had she actually been pushed over the railing, she couldn't have survived the fall. Perhaps I should question Kay's memory of where she fell. Where she fell, Kay probably did not fall over the railing. Logic added. Uh, so... Where was Kay standing, and where Kay fell? Connect. It was reversed. Kay was not pushed over the railing on this side. 
After all, if you fell from here, you wouldn't even be alive in the first place. But, certain I was standing under the cherry tree. If I fell, then the only place I could have fallen was over the railing. Or maybe the ground just opened up from under you and swallowed you up. The ground here can open up? How? No, no, it was just a joke, okay? Please don't take it so seriously. No, strange as it may sound, that may actually be the truth. Even if it's only a small chance, it matters not. Let's try searching the area around the tree. Okay, so just to look at the tree again. Kay could not have fallen over the railing. There must be something around here that proves it. Morrison and the Spectre is just looking up and cranny. And immediately there's a patch here. This is... looks like a maintenance hatch. Okay, maybe you fell down here. Fell down the hatch. Did Kay fall down the hatch beneath the cherry tree? Logic added. No, nah, just kidding. There's no way something like that could happen. I'm sorry, I just can't remember if... No, that was just a joke. No need to take it seriously. Right, so when should I take you seriously then? Then indeed. Well, if you jumped into Uncle Ray's arms... Mr. Shields. <laughs> Come on, Miles. It was just a joke. A joke, you know. Oh, I get it. Whoever takes you seriously. Ouch. That stung a bit. Um. Oh, and then we're done here. We've got to look at the TV, apparently. We're seeing live footage from the 50th floor. The investigation will continue through the night. Uh oh. Live footage. That's not good. The 50th floor? Isn't that the meeting room of the PIC headquarters? Oh, the 50th floor, not the top floor. Okay. That's right, we can see the shadows of the investigators behind those blinds. Uh-oh, looks like making a clean getaway just got that much harder. It seems we have no choice but to cleverly evade the eyes of the media. Maybe Uncle Ray should have become a spy instead of an attorney. If worse comes to worst, I may have to use Mr. Shields as a decoy. Miles? Just now, you were thinking of something terrible, weren't you? I won't rest until it's specifically rent. But wait, if that's the 50th floor, then what's that one? Okay, uh, deduce the lit up floor. Uh, the contradiction is found here with the pamphlet. Because there's a floor above the 50 floor, but it says there's only 50 floors. Do you know how many floors this building has? Of course, 50 floors, right? Just above the place where the PIC conducts their practically illegal cover-ups. Couples are wishing for love. Kind of ironic, don't you think? So what's this dark area above the 50 floor? Maybe it's the Tunnel of Love. Those are always dark, eh? The viewing platform we're on now should be directly above the PIC meeting room. However, the late night investigation is taking place two floors below us. This is a clear contradiction. Was there a mistake in the pamphlet? No, no, rather. It's more natural to assume this building has a hidden 50, 51st floor. Is there a floor 51? There seems to be a 51st floor between the 50th floor and rooftop. Logic added. I see. So that's where the Tunnel of Love is. Ah, she's so pure and gullible. It's breaking Uncle Ray's heart. Then why don't you take this opportunity to be more serious for once? You just don't get it, Miles. I joke around to make things easier for you. On the contrary, it's painful jokes only make things harder for me. Anyway, logic. So she fell down the hatch to the 51st floor. An extra floor between the 50th floor and the viewing platform. Why didn't anyone notice it? Normally you'd notice it. I mean, how can you hide an entire floor? That is where the problem lies. No one noticed something that should have been easily noticeable. In other words, it must be impossible to access the 51st floor through normal means. I see. Maybe there's a secret portal or something. Okay, now's not the time to be thinking with portals. Wow, really? <laughs> oh, portal reference right there. Oh, goddamn. I'd like you to recall the hatch at the base of the cherry tree. 
Isn't it normal to assume there's a room on the other side of the maintenance hatch? Haha! <laughs> Uncle Ray likes where you're going with this. Let's hurry and check it out. There we go. Now let's see. This is... Looks like there's a lot of stuff down there. Is this what they call a storeroom? There's no doubt about it. This is where Kay fell down. Of course, and with this, the mystery is solved. No, not yet. We still have the mystery of the person in the red hood who was walking in midair. Now, now, let's not get greedy, shall we? We found the storeroom, so let's wrap things up here. I suppose you have a point. Hmm. It does seem to warrant an investigation. Investigation complete! Well, if it isn't Miles Edgeworth. Oh, hello! Emma! What are you doing here? I heard about the case when it says Gumshoe. Since I was already in the area, I thought I might as well check out the crime scene. This girl's name is Emma Sky. Ah, it's Emma! Yeah, she's a high school student studying in Europe to become a forensic scientist. She's the younger sister of my former boss and a witness in one of my trials two years ago. Detective Gumshoe told me uh, everything over the phone. He sounded really upset. He said you lost your badge at the Grand Tower and Kay became a mummy. But, but please, calm down. I thought you left for Europe just a few days ago. Don't tell me you've come back already. Yep, and I brought my teacher from abroad too. He needed, eh, he needed an interpreter, so I volunteered to help. If your teacher cannot speak English, why aren't you with him right now? He can still communicate with people. Don't underestimate the importance of body language. That doesn't really count as a language. But enough about that. What happened to Kay? Is she alright? My my, what a good friend! Isn't this great, Kay? Y yeah. Um, who are you? Are you Mr. Edgeworth's new assistant? Ha <laughs> ha On the contrary, my dear. I'm Ray Shields, head of the Edgeworth Law Offices. Edgeworth Law Offices? Wait, you mean like defense attorneys? Mr. Edgeworth, why did you suddenly become an attorney? No, it's not like that. I think about it. It's a rather complicated working relationship. <laughs> Don't sweat the details. Let's start with an introductory hug. Why'd you become a defense attorney, Miss Edgeworth? Hey, don't just ignore me. Because I don't approve at all. Uh huh. Well, why don't we continue this conversation down below? That's right. The police could arrive any second now. Miss Edgeworth, who's she? I'll explain later. First, we have to go down the hatch. Okay, guess I'll be joining the prosecu uh, defense team. I'll explain about that too. Well then, let's go, go, go to the storeroom. To be continued. Oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. So, piecing stuff together, she didn't fall off the building, funnily enough, and splat on the floor. 50 stories down. I guess actually 51 stories because there's a hidden story that we're going to investigate next time. And Emma's joining us. Yay, Emma Sky! Woo! And then Ray Shields, Emma Sky, Kay Faraday with no memories, Miles Edgeworth is no longer a prosecutor. What an amazing team. So we'll find out what's in the storeroom, I guess, is what they're calling it. I don't know why it would have to be a storeroom just because there's stuff in there. I mean, I have stuff in my bedroom, doesn't mean it's a storeroom, it's just a bedroom. I don't know. But anyway, we'll find out what's down there next time. So, thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time. Good. Bye.